Measuring less than nine centimeters high, this small fragment of John's Gospel is the earliest known fragment of the New Testament in any language. Known as the John Ryland Manuscript, the importance of this fragment is quite out of proportion to its size because it has been dated at 100 to 125 AD. It stands as a resounding refutation to the critics who once late dated John's Gospel to the third century. The universal acceptance of John as the last of the four Gospels necessitates that all of the Gospels were composed in the first century. Is it a mere twist of faith that the oldest fragment of the New Testament has the Roman procurator Pontius Pilate questioning the existence of truth? Verses 37 through 38 of the 18th chapter of John's Gospel. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king? For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? I believe God arranged the manuscript evidence with a twist of irony. For skeptics once denied the truth by claiming Pilate was a fictional character. That is, until 1961, when archaeologists discovered a limestone monument bearing his name. All truths are absolute truths. Even truths that appear to be relative are really absolute. It's a matter of viewing the data in proper focus. For example, when I say that I, Chris D. Putnam, think it is cold in this room, that may appear to be a relative truth. However, it's absolutely true for all people in all places at all times that Chris Putnam perceived the room to be cold at 12.55 p.m. on January 12, 2010. Truth is discovered, not invented. It exists independent of anyone's knowledge of it. For instance, Genesis 1.1 says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now, it's always been true that God created the universe even before the Big Bang cosmology verified it. Truth is unchanging, even though our beliefs about truth change. For instance, when we began to believe that the Earth was round instead of flat, the truth about the Earth didn't change, only our belief about the Earth changed. Beliefs cannot change a fact, no matter how sincerely they are held. Someone can sincerely believe that the world is flat, that only makes that person sincerely mistaken. Truth is transcultural. If something is true, it is true for all people in all places at all times. One plus one equals two for everyone, everywhere, all the time. In short, contrary beliefs are possible, but contrary truths are not possible. We can believe that everything is true, but we cannot make everything true. God reveals truth through the Bible. Now the Bible claims to be the objective word of God. Whether a man understands it or not, whether he recognizes it or not, and whether he applies it to his life or not, it is still the word of God. As a former skeptic myself, I realized this is hard to accept. I came to believe it piecemeal at first, yet through involvement in a solid church with good teaching, prayer, study, and foremost, the grace of God. I discovered that there are good, adequate, and sufficient reasons to believe. If you are an honest truth seeker, I suggest that you set your presuppositions to the side. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. So while it would be nice for us to equivocate in order to win friends and influence people, Jesus has not left that open to us. While most religions have some beliefs that are true, not all religious beliefs can be true because they are mutually exclusive. They teach opposites. In other words, some religious beliefs must be wrong. In fact, world religions have more contradictory beliefs than complementary ones. 
Most have a similar moral code because of a God-given sense of right and wrong, but they disagree on virtually every major issue, including the nature of God, the nature of man, sin, salvation, heaven, hell, and creation. Jesus said to enter by the narrow gate. So if the gate you are standing at is wide, you're at the wrong gate. The relativist believes that all religions are equally true. For them, to say that your religion is exclusively right is offensive. They have redefined the term tolerance, which actually means to put up with something that you believe is false. After all, you don't have to tolerate things you agree with to the absurd idea that all religious beliefs are true. In the final analysis, those who believe that truth is relative are actually a very narrow-minded bunch. They actually believe that relativism is true and everything else is false. In other words, pluralists think all non-pluralist beliefs are wrong. Now we come full circle back to the question by our ancient relativist Pontius Pilate. What is truth? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord Jesus Christ claims to be the way to God, indeed the only way. He claims to be the truth about God, himself the truth. He claims to be spiritual life, not merely the way to life. The Lord said that he is the only way to God. There is no other way. Jesus said to those that had believed in him, that if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. You know the truth, and the truth will set you free. (laughs) 